Morning, Romany Rye. Yeah, I want to carry on a little story today. And uh, after I got my TK and I was on, I had enough, to be honest, of they using me lorry. So I used to park it out at Charlie. So at that time, I was still friendly with Charlie. I was doing a bit of work for him until he tried to fuck me about on a big pile of steel he had there. Anyway, I was working there a couple of days, doing my own thing other days. I had a little bit of a space over a compartment lorry and an old shipping container. So I was flying on, really, to be honest, going on all right. And um, I used to take me a bit of metal then up to George Turner's myself. But George bought that solder off me and we well, was back on the road. Now, I goes there one morning and uh, pulls in on the Weybridge. And uh, Carl, that's the old German man, come out to me. He said, what are you going to take off first? I said, well, it's up to you, Carl. I said, but there's about 30 load of batteries on the back. Or he said, we'll weigh they off first. He said, once you wait, go up to the top end, Joe's up there. He'll put the batteries in a bin and then come back down. I said, all right. Anyway, up I goes. Joe's up there. But Joe was a nice man. He always had time for me. He'd known me from when I was six year old. I'm now 17 year old. So uh, he said, all right, Clarence, say, all right, Joe. And I'd noticed up there, they had a load of these big pipes, I guess that they use to connect for water and drainage in quarries and and pits and stuff. And they had a big aluminium flange on each end. If there was a hole pipe, these were all cut off. So uh, I said, what's happening with that gear there, uh, Joe? He said, it's all gone in the iron alley. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, I wouldn't buy that. He said, go and ask him. You know, yeah, what you said. Anyway, went back down to the metal shed, unloaded, had my ticket, and I goes. All right, Mr. Turner, all right, Clarence, my point, you say? I said, Mr. Turner, you've got a load of alley pipe ends up there. I said, they just want cleaning. Yes, he said. What are you thinking? I said, I would like to buy them from you and bring, I'll bring them back. I'll clean them. All right, he said. Go up, see Joe, and you load them on. Do I thought to myself, this is all right. I didn't even, I didn't even ask the back. So uh, I goes up, sees Joe. And I never, don't know why, I never asked before, but I go, I went up the top and they got bins, like 600 gallon oil tanks, the tops cut out and they got copper, brass, irony copper, brass and these fucking bins all full up. I said, Joe, what's, what's the crap with all this said? He said, well, that's irony. He said that we are supposed to be cleaning. He said, but we never do. He said, there's fucking bins and bins out here, everywhere. He said, what, what's on? I said, but, but I'm going to buy these pipes off George. All right, he said. Anyway, put them on. They was all strapped on pallets, abandoned. Put on four pallets. I thought to myself, I know the Curtis. Not a lot of people knew. But these pipes... They had a steel banner in them, and they was 
heat pressurized on to the joint. Years previous to that, we had a load, my father, and uh, we didn't have no fucking soles back then, as such. And we couldn't get them off. Anyway. Really stuck on her. So, um, we was home in the yard one day, and, uh, because I learned me trade and welding, I had all the gear, and I? I had fucking angle grinders and all sorts. I decided to cut a groove down from one of these pipes to see if I could beat them off, but they're stuck solid. You could get them off, but take you a long time. So, uh, Tommy Bear said, we'll put one in the fire. I said, well, I ain't no fucking good alley in Mel. He said, no. He said, we'll try it. Anyway, we had a 45-gallon drum. I filled them with wood, got them really hot, and put this fucking, about, I don't know, two foot six long, pipe on top of this fucking 45-gallon drum. Not enough to catch the fucking rubber, like, but hot enough. Anyway, putting on there. Sat down around a fag, lo and behold, fuck me, he opened up like that. Just peeled off. Had a bit of hole right there, pulled him off, and he fell right off the fucking rubber. So I knew I could do him. Anyway, loads of myself, well, Joe loads me up. Come on. Gets out to Charlie East's yard now, because I dare not take him fucking home. Told Charlie what I was going to do. But he said, Charlie said to me, use my disc cutter. He had a fucking petrol disc cutter. Start the fucking saw up from like that. Cut the fucking groove right down through so that the rubber was cut through. Had a little fire burning there. Fuck me, they was coming off like shelling peas. So, Charlie said to me, to be fair, he said to me, you can't leave the rubber here, you know. I said, I know that, Charlie. I said, I put it there. I said, no, move it. I never did fucking move it after the argument. Anyway, done the first load, takes them back. I think I earned, I think I'd done them. I'd done them in about two days. And I earned like 700 quid off that job. Takes them back now. Fella in my cabinet pulls on the fucking bridge. Mr. Turner, I bought these uh, these alley things back. These alley ends. Really? I said, yeah. All done, Mr. Turner. Anyway, he come out himself. I think he said, amazing job. Well done, he said. Weigh it off, weighed it off. And we chucked it in the cast alley bin, because that's what it was. I said, I'll take take all of them, Mr. Turner. Yeah, he said, go and load them again. Anyway, I did earn 700 quid out of that job for two days' work and a bit of fuel back. I had to go back up anyway. So, yeah, that was that was good. He was, he was looking after me. Now, I got into him. I said, they are only bins you've got up the top, Mr. Turner. Yeah, he said, uh, that's there for the boys to clean when we got slap periods, but we don't ever seem to get slap periods. I said, how much a bin would you charge me for that? He said, depends what it is. In the bin. He said, it'll have to be Judged on what's in the bin. He said, Joe will sort you out. Now I knew Joe was all right. So I goes up to Joe and tells Carl what I'm doing because Carl <coughs> was the mayor, was the warehouse manager, but Joe was the yard manager and transport manager. So I said, Joe, I said, he said, I can buy this gear. He said, but you got to judge it bin by bin. 
and you've got to tell him what's in the bin, what sort of material's in the bin, so he can price me up. Oh, he said, that's right. So I was in a bit of a position. I didn't know best to offer Joe a drink or not. I thought, if I offer him a drink, I could insult the cunt. In the end, I bit the bullet. I said, Joe, look. I said, I don't, nothing underworld, I said, but I said, I was drinking it for you if you describe the bins of what they should be. That's right, he said. Leave it to me. Anyway, the first two bins we put down for what they was. Brought it home. And uh, I still out Charlie East Yard. I don't go on with this stuff because they wouldn't have liked it. And I know full well they'd have been on it. At least Uncle Larry would have anyway. So uh, I buy myself a little metal shear. I couldn't, I couldn't go fucking wrong. I had an old boy from down Lanner called Alan Butler. He was called the Donkey Man. He was called the Donkey Man because he had a foal donkey born up on Lanner Green and carried it in the pub full of blood, just born. He was so excited. So he got the nickname Donkey Man. So Alan was £20 a day. Cash. So uh, he's a funny old fucker, though, because when he was working for my father, Harry used to mung his fags, and he only used to come to work with ten fags. Harry used to say to him, let's have a fag out. Oh, fuck off, get your own. Let's have a fag out, I'm going to shop in a minute. Anyway, that would go on about 20 minutes later, half hour later, Harry would ask him again for another fag. Oh, they're fucking head up. Anyway, I said, Alan, I've got a job for you. I said, depending on how much you do, I said, I'll give you 25 pounds a day. That'll be a job, he said. Pick me up. I bought this little McIntyre 150 cleaning chair. Now, this is where it was. Joe from Turner's was putting iron the alley on the top of the bin, but down below was copper, brass, and all sorts of stuff. So I was having it off when I... So... I goes back up after the first week. And uh, I cleared myself, Tommy paid the wages, and everything I got. I cleared myself about 800 quid. So I had under bar me put you anyway. So I goes up to Joe, I said, uh, right Joe, I said, what bins are we taking today? By now, see Mr. Turner is thinking I'm doing a wonderful job, which I am. He'd never clean it. It would have went away for Ernie. I said, and by the way, I had it in my hand covered up like that. That's for you. Oh, no, I don't want enough. I said, that's for you, Joe. Because that's no bribe. I said, let's just say thank you. You're helping me on my way. Thank you very much, he said. Right, he said. There's a bin there. And in the bottom is all four core heavy duty wire. It's got to be stripped. Hmm. It's all right. On the top was Irony Alley. So, I was getting myself primed up, see, to do what I had to do. And you you could understand, I was always trying to make something. So, uh, I decided to make myself, Jesse Frank can confirm this, I decided to make myself, he saw it years later, it was in the corner of my yard, out of a lorry tipping ram, and off the P-51 
PTO of a lorry. I just welded an old steel box together, strong mine, not, not, not a weak one, with a ram with a blade, and I used to crush most of the iron the alley. Crush it up, small bits. So I, this Alan, was sorting all the alley out and leaving the, the real iron the alley with studs that never bothered, but it would never have to. Right. Unless it was a real big piece with a stud in it, then we undone the stud. But by then, see, it's all smashed up. So I didn't mind the iron the alley because it was cheap. So I was out Charlie East working very well. No problem. So I had the big bust up with Charlie. Now I had to move out now. Now I had this thing going with terrorists, didn't I? And uh, me, me uh, father's family, they couldn't understand. I was going from strength to strength. Only on the strength, really, of um, George Turner. So, fought out with Charlie. Now I had nowhere to fucking go. I said, I know what I'll try. I said, I'll try my Uncle Bobby and Carol. You never know. I goes out there, sits down. After about 10 cups of fucking tea, Uncle Bobby decides to get up in his chair, put it in the yard, walk around. I said, Uncle Bob, I said, could I rent a little bit of this yard? Well, I don't know, my cocker, he said. About renting. He said, I'd probably let you use a bit of it over there. He said, but about renting, he said. What do you want to do? I told him. And he'd always had bits of scrap in his yard. He was a timber man. He had tractors and all sorts there. A little short man, but strong as a fucking bull. So, uh, he said, yeah, I'll let you use a bit of that. Right. Problem solved. So, I had to use his electric, didn't I? To fucking run this year. Or buy a tiny size generator. So, that was all right. So, I set it all up, got Alan to go to there, took Alan there every morning, he couldn't drive. He could drive a motorbike, but he wouldn't drive it all the way there, out pool. So, got out there now, and Uncle Bob didn't like he. No, my cocker, he said, I don't want to hear. Oh, that's fucked that. So anyway, I didn't want to stop taking this stuff from Turner's. So I was going to and fro. Every couple of three days, four days, five days, I was up there. So I said, what are you going to do, Uncle Bob? He said, Uncle Bob would like to have a go at this, would you? See, so now I'm thinking to myself, fuck it out, I've got to share it now. So anyway, to cut a long story short, I moved out because of this reason. You'd get there at 8 o'clock in the morning and he'd be just crawling out of bed. After you've had 10 to 12 cups of tea, because I can't drink tea like that. I can have one cup of tea in the morning, maybe two maximum, but that's me lot. After 10 cups of tea and the same fucking stories, you'd go to work. So I had to find myself somewhere else to go pretty fucking quick, as it wouldn't, as it wouldn't be no good. So I was if and an ammon and if and an ammon. And um, Uncle Bobby said to me, as it happened, that he was selling up. He wanted to move out. So I went back to Tommy Ware and my granny 
I said, uh, Bobby Nukes place is on the market. I said, I'd like to buy it. Would you just lend me the money? My granny said, no, no, not lending no money. I said, fair enough. I didn't know enough about fucking mortgages or nothing like that. So I had to move out. So I come back to the yard home. Now I had these lovely fucking bins of, of irony fucking metal. And uh, I had Alan Butler back there doing it for me then. But uh, I can't tell you the exact reason why that faded out. Because I was having some lovely fucking deals. And um, it all went fucking pear shaped as I went back there. Everybody wanted a bit of it, see? It was all on, on about it, this, that, and other. Uncle Harry was interested in it. He wanted to do a bit of it. My granny wanted he to be involved. In the end, I said, that was it. No more. So, leaving Charlie East fucked me up a little bit. But by the time that happened, though, to be fair, I'd have a, I'd have a good old run. Because uh, old Joe gave me some lovely gear. Fucking cable. Like that. Four core, five core cable like that. And we were stripping it with Stanley knives. And uh, what we used to do, we used to strip the area cable with a Stanley knife and about three foot lengths. That's because you could easily do that. So we had a fucking big old steel bath filled up with water with a fire underneath, can't keep chucking wood under, get the, get the water boiling hot. Chuck the lengths of cable in the water, leave them in there for five, ten minutes, once you've got the system going, and that rubber will cut them off like cut and butter. Pick a piece up, standing knife, straight down through, because the water heated the rubber up, made it soft. Yeah, we was fucking stripping cable like hell then. And uh, I was in two minds to buy a cable stripper, but... All day things back then, it was around obviously, but it was out of my reach like. But uh, to strip the cable, that's what we used to do. Not the outer stuff. You'd have a piece of cable, strip it with a standing knife, take the armour off, and then you'd end up with four strands, four or five strands, but this big around. This water was bubbling away, boiling hot, chuck it in, and have a fucking old rake, pull a piece out at a time. You have to have gloves on, because it was hot. Grab it all like that, straight down with a standing knife, done, in seconds. So once you've got the water hot, and you've got the momentum going, it was easy. But uh, I didn't want to give that job, I didn't actually give it up. I think I took that many bins over a period of time that it was running low on the bins. And I think Carl, I think Carl went up and fucked it up, to be honest. I think they had a little bit of a slack time and he went up and said, we'll start cleaning up bins ourselves. That job faded out. But I think, I think it was Uncle Harry that uh, got my grandmother revved up about that job. I didn't let him know as less as possible, see? You couldn't let him know too much. But Uncle Harry was always a nosy fucker. He would come round and see what he was up to. But when I think back then, even they two, see, even then, uh, Harry and Tommy couldn't look at each other. No way. So that's a little story for now from the Romany Wright. And uh, I'll say goodbye, and I'll catch you later.